the world's oceans and the ships that ply their trade thereon. Worthy reminders of the importance of maritime activities towards the betterment of our livelihood. Undoubtedly, the ships that navigate the globe and the able men and women who construct and crew them are living proof of human ingenuity and courage. The oceans and the uses to which they are put are also a metaphor of mankind's ability to harness, at least in part, its natural environment. The seas around us are, as they have been since time immemorial, an important source of sustenance. Paradoxically, the expanse of the globe's seas is also, through the instrumentality of ships, a means of convergence between continents and countries. The mighty and magnificent oceans are, however, also a poignant reminder of the tragic loss of lives at sea and of the irreparable damage caused throughout the years to the marine environment. Images of the past haunt us and help us recall in our memories those who have lost their lives at sea and those who have labored and those who continue to labor to improve standards towards safer shipping and cleaner oceans. Even towards the beginning of the past century, it was recognized that the international community required a guiding light to progress out of the dark tunnel of largely unregulated maritime activity. However, it was not before 1948 that the beacon in troubled waters was lit with the establishment of IMCO, which in 1982 became known as the IMO. This momentous development later proved to be the beginning of a more structured and reasoned global approach towards an improved regulation of maritime issues. The IMO's original objective was the adoption of international legislation relating to shipping safety and the prevention of marine pollution. This objective has been largely fulfilled. Indeed, over the years the International Maritime Organization has been instrumental in the preparation of various international conventions and other instruments the fundamental purpose of which was the uniformity and harmonization of international regulations relating to maritime affairs. Today, one of IMO's priorities remains that of ensuring international maritime conventions and other relevant instruments are implemented on a worldwide basis. With this objective in mind, the IMO International Maritime Law Institute, or IMLI, was established as a project of faith in the future development of international maritime law. The effective global implementation of IMO instruments is one of the organization's key roles and it is a task for governments, maritime administrations and the shipping industry itself. Without the expertise to undertake the highly specialized task of drafting the necessary practicable and enforceable national laws, the internationally agreed standards simply could not be implemented and put into effect. IMO established the IMLIN to provide the international maritime community and particularly maritime administrations with the support considered necessary to ensure that uh, sufficient maritime law experts with the requisite knowledge and skills were available to develop national legislation to give effect to international instruments to which governments had become parties. The IMO International Maritime Law Institute was established in 1988 through an international treaty between the Government of Malta and the International Maritime Organization of the United Nations. Its main goal is to assist governments, particularly in developing states, to implement IMO treaties and other international legal instruments. For some time, it was clear that a number of member states wished to enforce the rules adopted by IMO, but lacked the necessary human expertise to do so. Legal training at INLI places great emphasis on international regulations and procedures for furthering the purposes and objectives of the IMO. In particular, states require the skills and expertise of persons trained to prepare and draft legislative instruments for the effective implementation the international applicable standards within a domestic context. Over 300 candidates from over 100 states have successfully completed their studies at IMLI since the Institute's inception. What is of greater significance is that today graduates of the Institute occupy senior positions in their country's highest institutions. 
The Institute provides suitably qualified candidates with the opportunity to undertake advanced training, study and research in international maritime law. The Institute promotes research through appropriate programs for the effective global implementation of international conventions and other international instruments towards improved safety at sea and the prevention of marine pollution. The ability of all states, particularly that of developing states, to implement international conventions and instruments adopted by the IMO and other relevant international organizations is the Institute's paramount consideration. It is recognized that all states must have an appropriate legal infrastructure for the reception of international rules of law into their domestic legal systems. Such infrastructure must also provide adequate machinery for the review, revision and modification of the applicable legislation, thereby allowing the municipal body of laws to keep abreast of international developments. For these reasons, the state as well as the relative shipping industry, requires the services of selectively trained legal personnel having specialization in maritime law. Imli offers a Master of Laws degree in International Maritime Law, a Doctor of Philosophy degree and several short courses dealing with topics ranging from marine environmental law to the law of marine insurance. The main purpose of the course is the training of lawyers from developing countries to become specialists in maritime law. The course is open to law graduates of any country who intend to pursue their legal careers in the field of maritime law, whether in the public or private sectors, whether in practice, administration or in academia. The duration of the course is one academic year, beginning in mid-September and ending in early June of the following year. The program followed is intensive and student achievement is highly competitive. The teaching program is delivered by the academic staff of the Institute and by visiting fellows who are practitioners and academics of international repute in various fields of maritime law. IMLI now offers a specialized research-based program leading to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Maritime Jurisprudence. The PhD degree may be obtained on the basis of research carried out over a period of not less than three and not more than five years. All relevant application forms may be found on IMLI's website or may be sent by the Institute upon request. The application form should be completed by the candidate and sent for review to the Institute. When all criteria for admission have been met, including clearance and confirmation of financing, acceptance for admission will be notified in writing to the candidate. IMLI's contribution towards the objectives of the IMO is best reflected in the work of its graduates as they, in turn, contribute towards the implementation of international maritime standards in their respective countries. Furthermore, IMLI, through its graduates, is also an instrument towards the progressive development of international maritime law. Therefore, in international fora, it is not uncommon to find IMLI graduates leading national delegations to IMO meetings and diplomatic conferences. IMLI's contribution to the international maritime community is vividly reflected in a statement issued in March 1999 at the Diplomatic Conference on Arrest of Ships. In this declaration, eight IMLI graduates who were representing their respective countries at the conference expressed their appreciation and gratitude for their studies at IMLI. They noted with satisfaction that their studies at the Institute enabled them to contribute effectively towards the codification and progressive development of international maritime law. My own involvement with IMLI began at the time the syllabus was being constructed before the Institute opened, but I didn't have the opportunity to come and teach until the second year of operation. Um, I've now been teaching regularly at Emily for over a decade, coming uh, once or twice a year depending. So I've had an opportunity to see the institution grow from uh, virtually its beginning to the state that it's reached today. Uh, it's been a very impressive growth. Uh, the original mission of the institution has certainly uh, been realized and is being fulfilled. I've seen a steady improvement in the student body. Uh, the Institute has now achieved uh, really first-class international status. 
And what I see for the future of Emily, provided that it gets the support that it deserves, uh, is that it's going to result in the attainment of the goal which many of us have sought both professionally and as academics for many, many years, which is the actual uniformity and harmony of international maritime law. So I'm very happy to endorse not only the aims but the reality of the International Maritime Law Institute as it is today and surely will be for the future, provided, as I say, it gets the support it deserves. We believe that IMLI has created a unique worldwide network of maritime lawyers that is leaving its mark on the harmonization and implementation of international maritime law. In most major ports of the developing world, the international maritime community can now rely on the expertise of an IMLI graduate. IMLI graduates have consistently done well after graduation, achieving senior policy or decision-making positions in uh, uh, their government uh, or in the maritime industry. This is evident in the high positions assumed by IMLI graduates nationally and internationally. In the global maritime arena, IMLI graduates have also excelled with appointments such as Vice Chairman of the IMO Legal Committee and Deputy Director of the Commonwealth Fund for Technical Cooperation. Many IMLI graduates come to IMO, attend the IMO meetings as representatives of their governments and play a significant part in the discussions, particularly on legal issues. We benefit a lot from their input and we are proud of them. We are confident that this proliferation will continue with the successful rites of passage of other eligible candidates through the portals of the Institute, which continues in its professed objective to serve the rule of international maritime law.